Is Orcs Must Die 3 worth our time? We're about to find out. Welcome, everyone, to episode 180 of One Hour, One Decision, 1H1D. I'm Chris. And I'm Tom. And we take 60 minutes and play a random game on Xbox Game Pass and decide, well, Tom, is the third time killing orcs going to be worth our time? I I mean, I didn't play it the first two times, so it's the first time for me. (laughs) It's the first of a third. We are talking about Orcs Must Die 3, developed by Robot Entertainment. This game, I was surprised by this, came out in July of 2020. Oh. Yeah. This is fairly old from this recording. And um, I play this on the PC, 12.57 gigabytes on the PC. Tom, what about you? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, It is only 10.5 gigs on the Series S. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why. Usually that's the other way around because there's extra stuff for being on the consoles. but Or something, yeah. I don't know. Compression, non-compression, doesn't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Because uh, we need to know what kind of game this is. I put Tower Defense first. Mm. And then I was like, well, I, I got to clarify a little bit. And I added third person action. Yeah, I just kind of smashed it all together. I put third person tower defense game. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. That's what, that's what because I think when you write tower defense, you think top down. Right. Kind of like mousing around kind of situation. Right. But th- this is not that. This is much more like Brutal Legend where you're playing mm, a yeah. RTS, but you're doing it boots on the ground like you're yes. playing a character in the environment. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, what about that game loop? Okay, so I put defend your rift by placing traps and slaying hordes of invading orcs. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. I just put keep those stinky orcs off your lawn, or at least the orb that you're trying to defend so yes there there is no grass at least not in the first six or seven levels yeah well it might be an upgrade yeah maybe, yeah, uh, maybe. I, I don't know soppy, what the rest of the levels soppy soppy <laughs> soppy grass wet grass that they get stuck in yeah but let's get into our likes about this game tom what do we like uh this game does not take itself seriously right from the beginning even when you're selecting the difficulty it's just kind of like this is what you should be playing and it has it set like as normal like it, it says it has the intended difficulty right which i right. think is a funny way of phrasing it like this is how you should be playing the game like almost talking down to the player exactly <laughs> Ooh, yeah I, I i guess there could be certain ways that that could have been an issue if you're like you know if it's like if it was from software, Elden Ring or something like that, people go up in arms, be like, "Why make the game easier for everyone or whatever?" And it's like, okay, well, these they they were very tongue in cheek, cheeky about all this stuff. So, yeah, good on them for that. I also like the fact that this game was pretty quick to jump into. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's no, I mean, there was there was there was a cutscene. I will say that there is mm-hmm. a cutscene that you start with, but then. Um, but yeah, if you could, it, you can jump into the tutorial or completely skip that. Yeah. And uh, I appreciated that. I appreciate that you could just get right into it. Because again, this is the third of this franchise or the series. So the fact that uh, you can actually ignore, <laughs> ignore all that and like they, they respect your time in that way. So good yeah. on them. If, if you're familiar with how to play these games, the right. game is like, we got you. You don't need to watch this. Just go right ahead. Uh, exactly. And for those of us who haven't played it, I thought it was pretty easy to pick up and play with those instructions. Like the instructions are basically almost like a PowerPoint slide. Like they're just kind of screenshots and they have like little arrows and little explanations and like, this is what this is. This is what that is. Okay. 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 And you're playing, you know, and right. then yeah. it'll st- stop you again later and go, this is what this is. This is what that is. Okay, okay, okay. You're playing again. Yeah, a- a- exactly. Like the um, very, very quick uh, tutorial in that way, and then like I think just overall the controls themselves are pretty intuitive to jump into. Uh, you, 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 you do kind of like on the fly building as the game is, but you do have you have um, to kind of back up. So yes, this is a tower defense game. For anyone that's not familiar with tower defense games, you have kind of rounds. Where you kind of you have your uh, a building phase, and then there's the attack phase, and so the building phase allows you to kind of you know set up your traps because that's what you're doing. You're trying to trying to prevent these orcs from getting to your home base and kind of doing all that nonsense there. Uh, 
Um, and and yeah, so that with that with that going with that going on, you have the ability to um, do it uh, during the building phase. I thought it was what was interesting is you could uh, during the attack phase still build. I don't know if yes. you noticed that. So Pro- provided you have enough resources and you're acquiring resources as you're killing orcs. Um, so once you know, once you have like 300 of the currency, you can put a spike trap down. And so it doesn't matter where in the game time that, you know, money acquisition has happened. If you have enough money, you can put it down, whether it's in the building phase or the regular phase, uh, the combat phase. Right. Exactly. Um, what else? I, I thought I thought also just killing the orcs was pretty satisfying as well. They all died in different ways. You know, the way that you kill them also changes the changes the way that their death animations are. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, so that was that was something nice to see. And uh, this game has co op. This is not just a solo experience. So you can have a cooperative experience here, and I appreciated that. I always like myself a co op game. So I don't know about you. What, what, you, what else did you got here? Um, there are. Uh lots of upgrades and you it's flexible in how you approach the game you know right from the beginning you pick between one of two characters um and those characters have different weapons in kind of a different build setup but then later if you decide you want to switch weapons you can do that you can add the other person's weapon to your arsenal um you're using the traps as weapons, as you kind of mentioned, Chris. So your weapon wheel includes the traps, which I think is helps with the intuitive nature of it, uh, where you can just kind of cycle through your weapons. And if you're not holding the weapon you're using to shoot or uh, maybe a heal item, you cycle to your traps and then can place the traps in the you know in the same way you shoot a weapon. Um, there are multiple campaigns uh, and modes of play available and they're doled out kind of as you complete something. So uh, if you complete a mission, then you can play it in endless mode. I just, presumably once you complete the first campaign, you unlock the next campaign and that goes that way. I'm not quite sure because I didn't get that far. Right. Yeah. We just did the hour. So that was that. Um, I also thought that the upgrades were kind of like they they built upon each other in a way. Right? Like, you know, yes. you're like, oh, I wish there was a way for me. To, like I, I, I as I was playing, I was like, I wish there was a way for me to slow them down a little bit. And boom, I got the tar pits. And I was like, oh, nice. OK, so now I can slow them down so that my traps can actually be more more effective, like with the arrows. And then then they gave you the um the ceiling smashers and stuff like that they were all just unique ways to you know crush and maim and destroy your orcs so that was fun it was fun to have that those all those different options so yeah now uh, should we get to our dislikes then well i i, I want to just agree with you that i liked the ability to kind of stack traps so like you could put a slow trap and then right after it put the uh you know like the floor trap the the spike trap and so some of the faster enemies who would just blaze right through maybe your spike trap, now you've slowed them and now they'll get hit with by the spike trap. I like that. And I do appreciate that while you can add all these traps while you're doing combat, sometimes that's a bit hectic. So I do appreciate the break between waves to let you strategize, to let you build, to, to see the kind of ghost animations of where the enemies go and go, okay, that's the route more or less they're going to take so I can put my traps effectively yeah absolutely um and what else i think that's 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 what i got for my likes what about you tom we we Uh, yeah i i i am uh done with that and if you'll allow me to please i will say my initial trying to lay down those traps i was really confused because i did not realize that i needed to shoot my gun to lay a trap down I, I don't know if I accidentally skipped that tutorial yeah. or, or what I did, but I was like, huh? I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to place the trap. That, that's true. I, I know I did point out that I thought that the controls were intuitive, but there was that initial part where I was like, wait, how do I place a trap down? Because the thing that I got confused about, because they had that little little cross, you know, the D-pad, where it says, you know, you know, select your your defenses. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's how you go into build mode. But I was like, no, that's not how you go into build mode. You cycle, like you said, c- cycle through those traps and um and then kind of select them that way and shoot them. So uh, but once you once you got into it and used it, it was like, okay, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. So yeah. that was 
that was definitely helpful. Um, Could have used a little more hand-holding there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Especially since they kind of did a tutorial. You figured, okay, can you do that for me here? But they didn't. But, you know, to be fair, this is the third game. So people that probably have played this before know how this game plays. So that's that. So um, I thought also (laughs) it's just me being frantic or whatever, but like the sheer tension of placing your traps sometimes, like making sure that you place them properly that makes sense is a lot of like uh, gave me a little bit of anxiety for sure. Because I was like, oh, am I? Did I did I make this and like this does my placement make sense in terms of this particular run or wave and stuff like that? So that was <laughs> that was definitely something that caused me to be um, anxious about the next wave and stuff like that. I was not given a warning about that second door, or at least I missed it. And so, like, yeah, I'm setting up everything for this one door of enemies. And then all of a sudden, their orcs pouring in through another opening, and I'm like, uh, uh, "But, but no, they're all supposed to come this way." And uh, so the game could get pretty hectic. I agree with you, and that scramble is very stressful when you realize, like, "Oh no, they're pouring in from the right, and I'm not ready for them." And they're getting over to my rift, and you only have, you know, you can only allow twenty through or whatever the number is. And uh, so you, the good news is, it is an action game, so you can take out your gun. And just start, you know, right. mowing them down. Right, exactly. That 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 is that adds a little uh, relief, I guess, <laughs> is the term here. Oh, I, I was curious, who did you end up picking uh, as your character? I I picked the uh, lady. Oh, I picked her too because I was like, oh, I know he's not probably not going to pick her. I'll, he's going to pick the guy, and I was like, I, so dang, I was I was going to try and talk about that but i guess we play the same person yeah uh, so I, you did play, she, play with she a had a gun right yes if you give me the option for a shotgun i am going to take the shotgun. okay okay that's fair that's fair spray and pray is the way <laughs> it really is and then you had the little the secondary which was the kind of like the grenade or like the, yeah that, yeah that it, it is talking my language for sure yeah. the yeah. combination of a shotgun and a grenade launcher yes please <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, this game, while it was, I, I did enjoy it. Like I felt like it could have been a lot more fun if it was cooperative. Yeah. Um, it just seemed like it, it really, it seemed to lean more towards a, uh, a, uh, a shared experience more than a kind of single player. I mean, I appreciate that they gave you a single player mode because that would have been kind of lame if we had to do that oh. or not, you know? So, yeah, was- I think it, it definitely would have been improved if that's if you were covering that second door while I was right. covering the first door, it, it right. would have made things completely different. It may have made things too easy, though. I'm not sure. This is true. This is true. But I mean, like you know, it's we probably could have burned through a lot more of those uh, earlier levels and probably gotten to more challenging things. Maybe so. Yeah. Well, the uh, other thing is, if if the resource level is the same, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. then uh, you only have so many traps. Right. Right. Yes. That's true. So either they they have to double the orcs, or you're each working with half as many traps. So right. I thought there were uh, like some of these traps were expensive, and the other thing that I wish they did, um, well, two things. One, when you complete a round or yeah, a session, they show you how many skulls you got, and then there was like bonus skulls but i was like i didn't know about those bonus like how i could have gotten those bonus skulls without you know just playing the game so it was like okay now i saw it i was like i'm trying to look for them more but it was still kind of like confusing that they you know did that again i know it's the third game so maybe it's just like part of the game and people are like oh that's expected that's how it that's how these games play i'm like how it's always been right (laughs) right so uh that was kind of annoying and the other thing i wish that they did is like when you go to purchase your upgrades they tell you how much it's going to cost resource wise it just tells you how much it's going to cost to purchase it at that point but just not so then it gives me a little bit more insight of okay this is going to cost this is going to be a pretty costly um trap that i can use so you know would have been nice would have been nice yeah it might better inform your decision making for sure exactly and there was an option there to like sell back the upgrades, but it was never active for me. Oh. Like I didn't actually have the like I poured in all this money, upgraded a bunch of stuff, and it's like, oh, you, oh, you okay. can sell back these resources. And I'm like, oh, but I can't. Hmm. You know, like it was an option up in the top right and it was grayed yeah. out. Yeah. 
I think I pressed that button. I didn't I didn't confirm it, but it did give me a warning like, hey, if you do this, you can't I think it said like you can't do it again. I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. So I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna do that. So yeah, so that's a, that's uh that's what I got for my dislikes. Anything else you want to bring up here, Tom? Uh, two things. One, I think the gameplay is very repetitive. Hmm. Uh, it is a simple loop. So you're constantly iterating it, right? right? It's you build traps, you unleash the orcs, you blow up the orcs, you build traps, you unleash the orcs, you kill the orcs. Right. And it just kind of just, that's it. That's that's what you're doing. Kind of, yeah. There are variants. Uh, you know, you're setting up different traps. Maybe you decide to stand in a different place or something. But right, map basically a bit different or different. Yeah. You know, you're doing the same thing over and over again. The other thing that bugged me is that you are. It seems like we were both playing quote unquote the campaign, but the campaign amounts to an opening cinematic and then just a bunch of level grinds. Yeah. Like I, yeah. It didn't feel, especially coming on off the heels of playing Immortals of Avium, right. where there was very much like this interposition between gameplay and story elements. Right. Right. There's there's not really story here. It's it's really just game mechanics. And because they do get pretty repetitive, I, it felt it might have felt less repetitive if it was broken up by more story beats. Sure. Yeah, and I think they tried to do that with. Uh... There's some voiceover work in between levels or like while you're starting up the next level or whatnot. But yeah, I agree. It's just kind of like, you know, here's here's what you got to do next and move on with it. Um, even though yeah, they, there was some banter in between, but it was still kind of like, you know, it could have been more. I don't know. Maybe if we play, played it cooperatively, would there have been more banter? No, oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into our other thoughts then. Sure. Yeah. How long to beat says this campaign takes about 10 hours to complete. So fairly short campaign. And then, of course, you have your cooperative um, playthroughs, multiplayer. You, you mentioned there's a bunch of modes there. And uh, this is xCloud compatible. So you can play this on the go. Need a controller or some sort of uh, like Steam Deck or ROG Ally to play it. But it's possible to play it on the go. So, Tom, what about you? What you got? Okay. So we've been saying Orcs Must Die 3 a whole lot. Uh, this is actually the fourth game in the franchise. Uh, the third game in the franchise was actually called Unchained, uh, but it was like an online game with like uh, microtransactions and that sort of stuff. And it's it was then discontinued and is no longer considered canon. So it's kind of one of those uh, holiday special esque sweep it under the rug, pretend it didn't happen. Uh, Yikes! This is this is the uh, third. Uh, I'm sorry, Orcs Must Die 3 is set 20 years after Orcs Must Die 2. That's why there are references to that other hero Yes, um, who was in the first two games, it looks like. Uh, I thought it was interesting that this was originally a Stadia exclusive. It turns out that Google is basically the people who funded it. They were fans of the franchise and so that's how this game really got kind of got launched was being, you know, subsidized by Google for Stadia. Interesting. Um, but then obviously it opened up and it's available on other platforms. Uh, there are multiple expansions for the game that got released over time. Mm-hmm. And, and they're all shown there on the launch screen when you start up the game, but they're all locked. Uh, I thought it was also interesting that the developer, Robot Entertainment, uh, made two other game series, one called uh, Hero Academy, hmm. which was mobile and is gone, apparently is defunct oh, as wow. well. Um, and then another game called uh, Ready Set Heroes, uh, which is on uh, PlayStation, which is a multiplayer dungeon crawler that turns at the end of the dungeon crawler into a brawler, which to me sounds huh. interesting. Okay. So it's like you work together, uh, get through the dungeon, and at the end, you just beat each other up. <laughs> Oh, each other. You don't. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, like a multiplayer co-op, like dungeon crawler. Yeah, yeah. And now we've we've made it through the dungeon, and now you put up your dukes and fight it out with your team. Okay, that's uh, now, Tom. I don't know if you noticed. I I kind of wanted. I didn't know if where where to place this, but the guy that does the announcements in between that gives like gives you the warnings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He sounded very familiar. He sounded like the voice of Vegeta. I don't know if you picked that up. I did not. Did you investigate it? I didn't but investigate it, but I, I will. I 
I'll try to put it, bring an update about that. Um, so you think it's Chris later. Abbott? It could be him. It could be him. It sounded okay. very much like him. I don't know, but the game is ridiculous enough that it totally could be. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it was backed by Google. So maybe they backed, backed up and bring struck to him too, to just say a couple of lines. I don't know, but uh, all right, cool. So Tom, we got to come to our, our final decision here. Are we keeping this game orcs must die on our respective hard drives or are we um, using a trap and killing it in some way? Uh, launching one of those grenades right at my feet and blowing yeah. myself up. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. So I was, I've got to admit, I was fully engaged with this game for the hour. Like mm-hmm. I totally lost track of time, maybe because of the hectic nature of it, maybe because it's like half action game, half strategy game. So I'm using both sides of my brain right. <laughs> uh, playing it. But once I turned it off, I'm not really compelled to turn it back on again. Like I had fun playing it, but maybe like I'm not invested in the characters and there are right. other games, you know, like Immortals of Avium where I'm like, I'm more interested in playing that instead. So I don't know. I haven't deleted it yet. It's only 10 gigs. It'll probably stay on the hard drive for a little bit until I right. need some space. Right. Um, but with other options available, I'm not sure I'm going back to this. Okay. Uh, I'm with you in the same way. I, I, I feel like this is, a, this is a game that you can definitely, you know, over a weekend or whatnot, have some friends, you know, get together and play it. Um, is it compelling enough to play it alone? I don't know. Uh, initially I thought, yeah, maybe, but then like, as you were kind of talking about the repetitiveness, I was thinking about like, this really does feel like a mobile game. Like it is, I mean, it is basically the plants versus zombies, but like, you know, now Mm -hmm. in a different perspective or whatnot, but, and because I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know if I like, does it have the same power? It'll like, like you, like you said, it'd probably stay on my hard drive, but I don't know if I'll keep, I will go back to it. Like I really need to go back to it kind of thing. So. Yeah. I think if maybe the two of us try it together might be a cool idea. Yeah. Or uh, maybe we get some people who are listeners who want to play with us or something like, I think that would be how we go back to this. Right. Right. Agreed. So. Those are our thoughts. Let us know what you think of this game. Follow us and say hello on Twitter or threads at TC1H1D. Shoot us an email at TC1H1D at Outlook.com. Uh, check out our next streams on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 1H1D, or, um, Hey, this is on YouTube. We've got, we've got comments active. We've got all that stuff. So let us know if you think that we should keep playing this game or we should play it with you. And, um, 1H1D is part of the QTB network. So if you like any kind of great gaming content, blogs, TikToks, whatever, check it all out at quitthebuild.com slash network. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed. All true. All true. And what else is true is we need to find out what we're playing next. So we will be clicking that surprising button and finding out here we go. Oh, tower defense tower. There's towers on these games, but uh, I don't know how much you defend them. But we're going to be playing Assassin's Creed origins ah so we go back to the beginning maybe to the beginning of assassins and their creed yes we're going to be talking about assassin's creed origin in our next episode but thank you so much everyone for tuning into this episode and uh, we will catch you in the next one thanks everybody 